I don't know if it's that much worse today than it would have been five years ago. It's probably worse than it was 30 years ago, I, but I would argue that 30 years ago, the relationship between the media uh, and government was too cozy. So it's certainly more hostile today than it would be back then, but I don't know that technology or sort of the spreading number of, of different sites that are out there covering politics has made it that much noticeably worse. I think politics itself is worse than it was five or 10 years, but for reasons that I don't think are, are because of the, the relationship with the media. I think it's other societal and political trends that are making politics a mess. I mean, it's, it's blown everything up as we know it. I mean, I don't think you can exaggerate uh, how profound uh, uh, the changes in media and politics and how campaigns are, are taking place. Just like you said, I mean, you, you don't have to go that far back was 07, before you finally have Twitter. Facebook didn't really exist in 2008. You really didn't have many smartphones being used. You didn't have BuzzFeed, you, Politico was a baby. Like you, you, the world is just a different place today and there's a, a million different directions from which information can be di disseminated or received. And it just, I think it really has most politicians in a rather wobbly state and that they don't really know how to react to it. Uh, they're being told, well, you have to participate in social media. Most of them don't know how, they don't even know really what that means, and so more often than not, I think they come off looking clumsy. It's sort of like your dad trying to wear skinny jeans, uh, like it's just not that cool, uh, and that's the way they look uh, on social media. And I think it's made politicians even more scared and more inauthentic because there's almost nothing they can do or say where they couldn't be caught on video or uh, have somebody tweeting about it, and so it's made everyone just even more plastic. And I don't think that's good for politics because I think over time it's going to really limit the number of people who would want to run. I mean, it's a, I think a very valid question. Like, Why would any sane person want to go to Washington? For two reasons. One, the process to get there is just a mess and the amount uh, that you have to allow to be x-rayed by the public uh, is extraordinary uh, and I think for most people uh, disqualifying for themselves thinking about running. And then once you get there, it's an almost an ungovernable place right now. So it's not attractive to run and it's really not that attractive to win. And I think that's having an effect on the quality of people that we're getting in Washington. You get into the business side of things and you have everybody who all they care about is really trying to save journalism and then you're trying to build a business model around that. And to us, like now running the business, it's all about creating a culture where you allow yourself to be constantly reinvented. I mean, I think that is, and this isn't just media, this would be, I think this is about to happen to universities, by the way, but I think that in every part of society, you're going to be constantly disrupted by technology until all this stuff starts to even out. And so we just keep trying to change ourselves, make sure that we're on the right platforms at the right time. And then it requires a certain level of, of instinct that, to make sure you're not chasing myths and mirages. I mean, that, that's what I'm obsessed with. I think so much of what the media does, what other media companies do, is they chase things that they think are real that aren't real, or they chase things that they think should be real that never will be real, as opposed to figuring out, well, what actually does work? What do you as a consumer want? What do we as a business need to be able to sustain ourselves? And I think we've created a culture where people are really high achievers who are obsessed with making sure that we figure this thing out. And you know, we've been blessed with talent and we've been blessed with, I think, a little bit of luck in our timing and hopefully we can keep doing it. My theory is, it, back then and my theory is today, like, it wasn't covered, it wasn't, flooded. It was, there's definitely a lot of coverage. I just didn't think there was great coverage, especially for people who are political obsessives. Like, we're political. You know, we only do one thing. We do politics and policy and, and governance. And I never thought the coverage was that good. And I thought if you could just, you know, we thought if you can just bust through by getting the best reporters to tell people stuff they didn't know, you can get the insiders addicted to your product. And then people who care what the insiders think about will be addicted to your product too. And that's still what animates us today. We, we still write more for Rahm Emanuel than we do for my parents who are out in the audience. I'm glad my parents read it. I don't think they just read it because uh, I'm their son. I think they're, they're interested in politics. They want to know what's going on. But by just focusing that way, because most, in, you were in journalism, like most of us were taught to write for the masses, right? So our brothers and sisters and cousins and uh, coworkers can understand what, what, what we're, uh, what's being written about politics. For this, it's all about insiders and making sure it's essential to them and then the masses will, will want in on the theater and the action.